he takes his illumination and he touches Elliot's forehead and he shall cause all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead and he touches him on the forehead and he says I'll be right here now if you don't know what's here I'm going to I'm going to teach you what's there here in a little bit I, you're going to like this okay and some things that you've been seeing going on in the church that you used to go to it's going to start making sense now so but I want you to get that idea here I, I I'll be right here okay I'll be right here what he's referring to is his third eye he has two eyes but Deep inside of the, the very core of his brain, he has in, right here at his forehead, in his forehead, he has a, a third eye. The New Agers teach that. The, uh, the Eastern mystics teach that. My goodness, the churches are starting to teach this now. You watch and see if it's not happening. The churches are going to start moving people to this opening or this... This awakening. Rick Warren already talks about another great awakening that's going to happen. And I want you to get the wording here. Because every time they say light, it doesn't really mean light. It's darkness. Every time they say awakening, it doesn't mean awakening. And I'm going to show you that from the Bible. It doesn't mean that. It means the opposite of waking, which means slumber and sleep. That's what it means. But they're talking about a, a, a great awakening going to happen, a, a revolution or an evolution or whatever. All these words and terminologies coming out of the church now. And I'm talking about not just the New Age churches like Rob Bell's Mars Hill Church up there, but I'm talking about what used to be mainstream quasi-fundamental churches now, and even some of the fundamental churches are are getting hit to this scene. They're, they're going to start using phrases that have to do with awakening the third eye. It's part of something that we have done a lot of research on here this broadcast, Kundalini, this idea that at the base of your spine, and I, I don't want to... I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here, but at the base of your spine is, of all things, a serpent. And he's going to uncoil himself up your spine through contemplative prayer, transcendental meditation, all of these other things. And his head is going to reach inside of your forehead to a particular place, and I'll tell you what that is in a minute, to open up or awaken you from your slumber so that you now have two eyes here but one on the inside of you. Uh, extrasensory perception is related to this. And all kinds of altered states of consciousness, illumination, uh, all of these things, all these concepts. The yoga has, has everything to do with... Um, with transcendental meditation, with awakening the third eye. And here all these churches are doing... Oh, we're having yoga classes next Tuesday night when it comes. Oh, it's not New Age. We're going to talk about Jesus in these. I'm telling you, it's the wrong Jesus. It's the wrong Jesus. But it's about third eye awakening and opening up uh, the portals of your mind. Now... Uh, back to this image of God touching Adam. There are several things, and I saw this here a few years ago, and I've, I've talked about this in some of our broadcasts. Um, the image of God here, and I'm going to zoom in on it. Here's the image of God here. He's, he's, he's touching Adam with his right finger. What, what's he doing with his other arm? Who is this? Who is this? Okay, who is this naked woman that God has his arm around with red hair? And you probably never noticed that before. You probably have seen this image a bajillion times and never noticed that God had his arm around a naked woman with red hair. And now you're looking at that going, God's got his arm around a naked woman with red hair. Who is this woman? Let me tell you who she is. She goes by, she is the, she is the goddess, the goddess, who goes by many names. 
In the old days, she was called Isis. Which I'm going to give you a little. I'm going to give you a little etymology thing here. Um, the word Isis. Um, I believe that Hebrew was the mother language. I believe that it was the original language uh, on Earth. And then at the Tower of Babel, um, it just went everywhere. But there's still in in just about every language. Some guy wrote a book on this a few years ago, and it fascinated me. But he could see um, remnants of Hebrew in just about every language in the earth. And the Hebrew word for, for man was ish. Uh, the Hebrew word for woman is isha. And so as people migrated out of Sumeria with their new languages, some of those words kind of sounded the same. So you have, <clears throat> you have a goddess in Egypt named Isis. That is, I believe, an offshoot of isha. Then you have Isis, you have um, Ashtaroth, which again, an offshoot of the word for woman. So you have Isis, uh, Esther, Ashtaroth, um, Easter uh, is related to that, and so on and so on. Then it migrates out, she's called Venus, she's called Diana, she's called Shingmu, uh, she is called different names in different cultures, but it's all the same woman. Her real name is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. But, but, to the Jews, her name was Shekinah. Now, you say, oh, Pastor Mike, I've heard that before. I mean, my pastor preached about us getting into the Shekinah glory. And you know, boy, I tell you what, we were in the Shekinah and we, we felt this amazing touch from God. I checked on this. In fact, the, the first place, what really got me going was I was reading the Da Vinci Code and the, and the first thing in, that I read in the Da Vinci Code that really got my gears turning was he mentioned about Shekinah. And I'm going, you know, I've heard that before. I've never preached on it, but I've heard it. And um, he mentioned Shekinah being the consort or the girlfriend of God. And I went, oh, the sacred feminine, the goddess, Isis, Ishtaroth, Ashtaroth, all these other names. So I did some background research on it. I have a friend uh, who was in the ministry. He, is, uh, he and I were buddies in college. And uh, I called him up and I said, Craig, I need to ask you, sir. And this guy, I mean, he loves the Bible. But he's, he's one of the few guys that I actually know that can actually read and understand Hebrew. He studied it. And I said, Craig, I need you to check on something for me. Would you check on this word Shekinah? Number one, is it ever found in the Hebrew Old Testament? Number two, is it a masculine or a feminine noun? He called me back. Mike, number one, the word Shekinah is not in the Hebrew Old Testament. It's not even in the not even in the English. Number two, it is not a masculine name. It's a feminine one. Where so Shekinah is not in the Bible. Now remember what I said at the beginning here. This Bible is everything. So if the Roman Catholic Church says uh, God gave light to Adam by touching his finger point, the Bible says no, that's not how it happened. If if your preacher or the preachers at the conference you went to start talking about the Shekinah glory and yet the Bible says nothing about it, should you believe it? The answer is no. Because if the Bible doesn't say it and if it's not plainly written upon the tables of Scripture, don't believe it. It's a setup. They're setting you up. And I've called, I've, I've, I have a very, very good pastor friend of mine, uh, a man that really, really long suffered with me in my days of liberalism, uh, Pastor Mike Hudson out in Oklahoma. And I called him and I said, Mike, have you ever heard of Shekinah? And he said, Yeah, I've heard that. I said, Where did it come from? He said, I don't know. I've just heard it. And I said, Well, let me tell you this. I know a lot of pastors that have probably used this because we've heard it in different places and just used it ways. Well, what's well, Shekinah? You know, it's the glory of God, you know. No, it's not. And so if, if, you, if, you know, if you know of a pastor that uses that in a sermon and you really like you think he's straight on with the Bible, he's probably not a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's all of us, all of us, 
can't, we can be misled. That's why we have that's why we have the referee here to straighten out and handle all the arguments. So anyway, Shekinah is in the Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism. She is the consort or the girlfriend or the wife of God. This is what comes out, and we'll, we'll get to this here, and this is what comes out in this whole Da Vinci Code thing. But Shekinah, here's the teaching here, okay? Um, when God the male copulates with Shekinah the female, then, and she listen to this, then the glory is released. The anointing is released. And I, I will tell you, I've heard some charismatic preachers out there talk about this like they knew what they were talking about. Oh, you got to get in the Shekinah glory. When the Shekinah glory, then the anointing pours out and then the glory is released. See, there's... They've turned the grace of God into lasciviousness, is what they've done. So here is this picture of God with his arm around his girlfriend, Shekinah. Um, here is, um, she's linked with Sophia of Greek Gnosticism. Gnosticism teaches that... Um, that everybody's got a spark of divinity. If the movie Bruce Almighty was about that. It was about the spark of divinity that's in all... You have God inside of you. You don't need to be saved by the cross. You, you've got God inside of you. You just need to bring Him out so you can connect with God. That's what they're teaching you through contemplative prayer uh, and through some of the music, by the way. But anyway, the Sophia of Greek Gnosticism teaches that um, you have a spark of divinity inside of you and there's something, there's like a rich that you can perform that when you perform this ritual then this spark comes into full flame get, get the picture there full flame Godhead Godhood you are now a God that ritual is called the great right ritual it is called the blade and the chalice the cup and the wand it's fornication is what it is Okay, that's what it is. That's what the Gnostics taught. That's what Dan Brown was teaching in several several of his books. And this is what Shekinah is all about. And so that's why God has His arm around this redheaded naked woman. Is that Him and her together, who've just copulated, are now going to give this illumination to this child of theirs. Okay. Mm. See, I get this image of Horus, or excuse me, Osiris and Isis. Osiris, the sun god, Isis, Isha, Ashtaroth, the goddess, Shekinah, and them producing or giving life to their son, Horus, who is a picture of the Antichrist.